Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Critters Cup. My name is Jacob, and today we're having a look at every LEGO Guardians of the Galaxy minifigure ever made by LEGO themselves. You can see here we've got the newest batch of minifigures from 2024, all the way back to 2014, so a decade ago. You can see there on the left, we've got the original, and then everything that released in between. If you like this video and want to see more minifigure comparisons or LEGO Marvel minifigures, Make sure you like and subscribe. I'll be doing other comparison videos in the near future for upcoming future Lego sets as well. You can let me know in the comment section which ones are your favourites, like list your top five, which you think are the best. Here we have the 2040 Guys of the Galaxy minifigures. On the right, you can see the original five members with Groot in the back there. And then on the left, you've got all the side characters that they did for the original wave. Now this wave was very good, there was a lot of new moulds and a lot of really unique prints they did for this theme when it released in 2014. Now bear in mind, this theme also got three sets. Now most MCU films these days, unless it's an Avengers film or Iron Man or Captain America, they only tend to get one, maybe two sets. But no, Guys of the Galaxy got three sets, all of pretty decent prices, but back in the day for what they were as well. But yeah, we're not looking at the sets themselves, we're mainly looking at the core minifigures. And across this theme, you can see there that we had two versions of Rocket Raccoon. The red one in the Ravager outfit was from a poly bag, which came with a little brick-built pot of Groot. And so we have two versions of Groot of various sizes, and we have two very unique versions of Star Lord that both look excellent, and then, on the left, Nova Corps officer, who unfortunately isn't a named character. You have a Sakarian soldier, which you could get free off if you bought all the sets. Ronan and Nebula, who were bad guys, the main bad guys in the original film, with Thanos lurking in the background, but Thanos wasn't included in any of those, these sets, which would have been kind of cool to get like he's thrown. So here we have the brick-built version of Groot. I've just gone into detail in a separate um, Group buildable character slash minifigure comparison video, which you can check out, that came out a few weeks ago now. And then here we have fully bag built for a potted group. As you can see, they just made up a free simple piece. As I said before, if you want to see all the Guardians of the Galaxy individually all compared, I've made YouTube shorts of all of them in the past. These two minifigures were definitely really cool. So, as I was saying earlier, 2014 Guardians of the Galaxy Lego put a lot of effort into these minifigures and the sets in general. Like, there's two unique new moulded pieces that were brand new at the time and released specifically for Rocket Raccoon. You had the tail piece, which they continue to use to this day. Removing the head mould, you had the shoulder pad piece, like, moulded in with the actual figure itself. It was really interesting. A lot of people said it was a bit bulky, but I think for the original suit, it kind of works. And then the Ravager one on the left was from a Toys R Us exclusive poly bag that you could only get in stores. Versions of Star Lord that were included in the 2014 way. You can see uh, it came with new moulded blasters in dark grey, which they later recolored or show later. But they also introduced this brand new helmet mould at the time, which they used in the Volume 2 set and then did a different design of it for the What If um, collectible minifigure of um, T'Challa. But... Apart from that, they've never reissued this um, helmet piece, which is a real shame they could have done with it in the 10 year anniversary of the Milano that just came out. Would have been really cool to get it there. And for some reason, there's also a helmet set that came out last year based on this without the hair, but they didn't reintroduce it as a minifigure part, which is, I guess, kind of standard for the Lego helmet line where they don't seem to have the minifigure corresponding helmet with the actual set, that the um, Bosch Leon minifigure. So on this way, we got two more diff new uh, moulded pieces, well three actually. So we had the silver ball piece, which is the power stone hidden inside. Um, you've also got this really cool headdress piece that they made from Ronan the Accuser, who they actually just re-released this year, but you can see it's one whole mould shoulder pad piece, it's very cool. And then also as well for the Nova Core officer, which I wish we got some name kit versions of these guys, like John T. Riley's character and Glenn Coase. But you can see how cool the helmet is for that. It could have been reused in other sets, I think. This is a really good mould that Lego never did anything more with. It could have been used for other characters down the line. But I do think it's really cool. And also as well, this was at the time when Lego used to actually include the MCU villains in their sets. But these days, for some reason, we don't seem to be getting any villain Marvel. So here we have the Volume 2 characters. 
Now, the one major character that was missing from this film was Ego, the leader of the planet, who I really hope they do make a future CMF series one day by, or an Infinity Saga style set would be really cool, but I don't see that happening anytime soon because there's a lot of missing Marvel MCU villains that Lego have decided to, to never make. Now, what's also interesting about this year is that it was the only guys of the Galaxy Might and Might Pro set, so you've got Star Lord and Nebula, two pretty interesting minifigures, and one of the few only two times we've had comic versions, I suppose, of the Guardians of the Galaxy. All the others have been MCU based, which is really interesting. The only other outline being is this Rocket Raccoon minifigure from the mech set from a few years ago now, which, yeah, it's just really strange that they've never done any more comic Guardians of the Galaxy sets. Uh, I'm not going to go too in depth on a lot of these guys because I've done a bunch of comparison videos on the Guardians of the Galaxy, but just a few of the highlights. Of course, you've got the return of the helmet with a brand new face print. And um, you also had Yondu, who was sorely missing from the original wave, so it's really cool they created a whole new thin piece for him. Really wish they had included more often. Taser Face is a really um, odd inclusion, but really welcome to get as a Lego minifigure. And this was the introduction of the Baby Group moulded pieces, which they did two different versions of. And Mantis was also introduced for the first time in this way. And once again, Gamora does not have a unique outfit, which I'm going to keep pointing out until we get to that version of her later on. 2018 was a very weak year for the Lego Guardians of the Galaxy minifigures. We never got a Drax, which was a real shame we didn't get him in an Infinity War style outfit. Um, these three were carryovers from the previous year, which I forgot to show this version of Star Lord. Do apologize for that. Uh, the teenage version of the group, which we had two unique versions of with the keychain piece with the printed face print. Again, I did a whole group minifigure build all character video, so you can check that out if you want to see full comparisons. But this is the best ever Gamora minifigure we have ever gotten, as she is no longer confined to a standard outfit that Star Lord or Drax are wearing, which is really cool. But yeah, this is a very disappointing lineup for the Guardians of the Galaxy. In 2019, again, it was another lackluster year. Well, since most of the Guardians of the Galaxy have been blipped away, we have just a new version of Rocket Raccoon with silver shoulder pads and Nebula, both wearing the Avengers Quantum Realm suits, which all those minifigures had in that year, because um, Marvel didn't want any spoilers getting out about the film. But yeah, 2019 was a pretty weak year. So the Guardians of the Galaxy made a return in sets with the release of the Benatar, but they only included three or four sorry, of the Guardians of the Galaxy. It didn't include Drax or Gamora. Gamora did release in a CMF, but this is the What If version that came out in 2021 as well. It was a great year, 2021, for Lego Marvel fans. And then you also have the What If Chitralo became Star Lord, which is the only time Lego have brought back up since 2017 the Star Lord helmet mode, even though it's a bit different on the top of the head. Lego also in 2021 did their first Lego Marvel advent calendar, which was a huge success for them. And they continued it every year since. And the following year, we got one based on the MCU Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special, which is a really good little special on Disney Plus, where we got MCU versions of Drax and Gamora. So we finally got Drax back in some shape or form as a Lego minifigure if you couldn't get him back in the day. And um, what's interesting as well, Nebula has more variants of minifigures than Drax, which is kind of crazy. But I guess she's been more prominent in the films because she was in the Endgame and stuff. But it's just a bit weird that Drax has barely had any minifigures. He does have the dancing baby group in front. And again, they continue with the recolors where we've got the sand green version of Drax, which people really disliked and people wish Lego went back to the light grey, which we will circle to when we get to it. Uh, this version of Star Lord has a different hairpiece and no door molded boots. It's a lesser version of the same one we just looked at, but I thought I'd just include it here because it is a variant to a certain degree. Now, here we have what I like to call the end game effect, where all five Guardians of the Galaxy have the exact same outfits. This is our, again, like I say, one of our few times we've ever had a comic version of the Guardians of the Galaxy, because this is based on the comics, not an Infinity Saga branded set, this mech. But we're moving into one side. We got um, the young teen adult version of Groot, Adam Warnock with really terrific arm, um, uh, with lead printing and hair print, just a really cool minifigure. We've got a Baby Rocket Raccoon mold, which is a reuse from Lego Friends, unfortunately. They also improved, um, as you saw before, with the Rocket in Brown. But yeah, Drax still continues with the controversial sand green headpiece as well. But these guys are really, really all the same minifigures. It's really disappointing, to be honest. Again, no Gamora. 
So it's always Drax and Gamora getting emitted from all these waves, one or the other, or if not both, which is just a real shame in my opinion. And also no high evolutionary included in any of the volume three sets. So the only real thing across all three sets that the minifigures had to fight was Adam Warlock, but he ends up being a good guy at the end of the film. Spoilers if you still haven't seen that, and it was pretty obvious, but yeah, he ends up being a good guy. So technically there's nothing, not even a cannon or like an evil drone or something like that in those sets. I just really dislike that wave in general. And that's probably why they go retired it super quickly because it was just not a very strong wave and not many people bought the set. Lego, those crazy people over there, actually did it and included all five of the original Guardians of the Galaxy in the new Milano set, which uh, they all have relatively unique outfits. Star-Lord and Gamora look quite distinguished this time because it's got like a blue popping out of the t-shirt. You got this minifigure of Baby Group from the rock buildable Rocket Raccoon set, so it was a bit of a random inclusion. You can see there they used the new Atan style version. Uh, these minifigures are really cool. Drax come back with his arm printing as well, considering the last time we got him, we didn't, the last couple of times actually, we didn't get any arm printing, which was a real letdown. These minifigures are really cool, and they actually included the villain for them to fight, which came in a slightly cheaper set, which came with a repeat, repeat of Rocket Raccoon. So you only had those two minifigures in the Warbird set, which they could have included an extra character, would have been nice to get there. Maybe Nebula in the new updated volume one design would have been really cool to get. But yeah, uh, 2024 has been a pretty okay, decent year. Again, no Star Lord helmet, I'm gonna keep complaining about that. And Drax also went back to the gray color because so many people were complaining about the sand green, which I think was for the best because it does suit the films more rather than the comics. And that is all the years up to date. And I don't think we'll get any more in 2024, guys. The Gats and Moon figures because we only have the X Mansion and the rumored Captain America 4 set that might be coming out in December. Apart from that, not much else coming out. So for now, this is all we've got. Hopefully next year, we'll get some Volume 2 Infinity Saga sets with Ego and stuff, but we'll have to wait and see what the future holds. And that's going to do it, guys, for my look at every LEGO Marvel Guardians of the Galaxy minifigure plus group. Comment section, which versions do you think are the best? Personally, I think the originals just are really well done. I do prefer the brown fur for Rocket Raccoon. If you just swap that out, I think the original lineup would be perfect. See you guys in the next video. Stay tuned for more comparisons and I'll see you all later. Bye for now.